Hello everyone and welcome to this latest episode of Book Time with Elvis. You can see I have a little bit of a different background today because I'm at school. I'm in school rather. Um, I spend most of today teaching with our ninth class, which is the highest class at school, and they are spending the day preparing for their entrance exams to their, uh, to their high schools. So I have a bit of free time today, so I thought, well, why not make a tag video and a bit of a, we've got we've got a nice uh, new colleague at school uh, as well. Which, uh, if you want, I can show you a little bit of him or her now. So that, that's Rex, our new colleague. Um, it's, a, it's an orphaned um, hedgehog that was uh, taken in by one of our teachers here, and uh, for now he's a pet. Uh, but uh, if he can probably build up his strength and size, he may, I guess, be re-released into the, into the wild. But at the moment, he's far too small to, um, you know, to survive on his own outside. He needs, to, he needs to put on weight, or it needs to put on weight, as I say called Rex but we don't know if it's a boy or a girl yet so but very cute anyway so I have this tag for you today I was very kindly tagged by Christina at knitting books etc and it's the um, uh, philosophy of reading tag that was created by uh, Brandon at Brandon's bookshelf uh, Brandon has a very nice channel he's he's quite new and he's doing uh, fantastic things he's he's got quite a few subscribers in, 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 in a fairly short amount of time so he's he's well worth checking out so you should go over there and check out him as well of course Christina who's uh, who's a wonderful uh, person and uh, she has a lovely channel so you should definitely check her out as well so let's jump right in there's 20 prompts for this I have no real preparation for it it's one of these kind of um, tags that you can just you know talk talk and talk and talk so I'll try and keep it not too long because you know I have a uh, tendency to, to waffle on, which I'm doing now. Anyway, let's go. So number one, what's most important? A good character, plot, or message? Well, that very much depends on what type of uh, book you're reading. Uh, I suppose if you're reading a thriller, mystery, something like that, you would need a good plot. Uh, personally, I do enjoy a good character. I like characters that uh, that I keep thinking about long after I've read the book, so certainly that's something important for me. Um, a message, I don't know, I don't really read a lot of books that would, uh, where um, the message would be the most important thing, but I could see, yeah. And, and, and plot, as I said, it depends on, on, on the type of book. I think you can get away with having not much of a plot and having strong characters. So like books, for example, like uh, A Diary of a Nobody, uh, which we read recently for our humorous book club uh, doesn't have too much of a plot, but the characters are fun. So you know, uh, basically, it's a combination of all three things I think which are most important. Uh, number two, should one read books about ideas or opinions they disagree with? Uh, yes, of course, you should educate yourself about opinions um, and ideas that you disagree with. You should try and see both sides of the argument. However, um, if you believe you know enough, uh, then sometimes it's healthier not to, to read things on that subject. So um, given you know my high blood pressure, for example, I will absolutely not read any book that is in favour of something like Brexit, for example, which would only serve to increase my blood pressure and drive me mad um, and uh, you know make me feel extremely angry. So it depends again on the situation. Number three, as tech advances, what do you think will be the role of books? Well, you know, books in some form or another, I think, will survive, whether or not the physical books we have today, uh, whether or not they will cease to be one day, uh, you know, whether it's for environmental concerns or practical concerns, um, you know, you can obviously get a lot more books on an e-reader than you can physically own. So I think um, definitely they will survive in one form, but whether or not 
physical books will survive the next 50 to 100 years. I'm not so sure. I like to think they do because there's something very nice about it. There might end up being you know, a few eccentrics who hold on to uh, physical copies of books, but perhaps in the future, as I say, people will uh, veer more to using um, e-readers for sheer convenience. Though, of course, you know, it will make our houses look quite empty uh, and uncluttered if we if we do dispense of uh, do dispense of actual physical books, but we'll see. Uh, number five, should one ever? Sorry, number four. How important are summaries, reviews, and art in your book choosing? Uh, well, yeah, I do uh, often read uh, the summaries of the book. Um, you know, the, especially the back of a book. I do do find I need to usually know what the book is about to kind of pique my interest. Uh, I will look at reviews. Uh, I don't necessarily listen to them uh, if it's something that I really want to read, uh, but I will certainly um, skim through reviews. I'm always curious uh, to see like the, the negative reviews. Um, so I often skip to the one star reviews and see what people's problems are um, with those particular books, but it doesn't always sway me. Uh, I like to try to kind of make up my own mind. It might prevent me from buying the book, but not necessarily from reading the book. So somehow I'll end up with a copy, whether from you know the library or whatever. Um, so I will make up my own mind, and if it's particularly good, then I will end up buying it. Uh, cover art, yeah, you know, I'm a sucker for good co cover art. I do enjoy um, books with a nice cover and of course you know um, you know when you're in the shop and stuff the you know it jumps out at you and you think oh yeah so that might be the thing that leads you to pick up the book and read the blurb uh, to begin with so yeah and uh, you know I do own multiple copies of the same book because of the cover art so the other day I was looking at uh, online and I saw this edition of Treasure Island and it had a fantastic cover with a parrot on it. I thought, oh, I have to have it. But then I said, no, you have enough copies of Treasure Island. But, you know, it's possible I still may end up getting it. So we'll see. Uh, number five, should one ever skim or scan a book? Um, I don't believe in it, uh, especially if you're reading for pleasure. Uh, if you are reading for academic purposes, then yeah, you might have to do that really. Um, I think... You know, it would be impossible. I mean, I remember when I was writing my various theses, if that's the right form, uh, I couldn't possibly read everything cover to cover, so I would have to uh, skim read uh, and get to the get to the points that were pertinent to what I needed to write about. So there are time. There's a time and place for skimming and scanning, but I think if you are actually you know reading the book for enjoyment, you should read it you know, because a lot of effort's been put into that uh, craft, so I think it's a shame to just skim over it, but you know, to each their own. Uh, number six, should reading always be enjoyable? Again, I think it's, um, you know, depends on the, on the person and your motivation for reading. Um, I read to to enjoy, I read to be amused. Uh, I don't necessarily want to read something, um, or if I do, I don't want to read too many things that make reading a chore or uh, something unenjoyable. Because then, you know, I'll lose um, part of my love for reading, which would be a, which would be a shame. So I think, um, you know, if you are reading for your own pleasure, reading should be enjoyable. Of course, if you are reading for your work or uh, for academic purposes, then what you are reading is more important than how it makes you feel. That's what I think. Uh, number seven, is it important to be well read? Um, I think for the individual, it's important to be well read. I mean, um, you know, a lot of people can you know want to just judge others for how well read or how not well read they are uh, but I do think reading um, gives you a more varied and more rounded um, life experience um, and in my own case I would feel proud if somebody thought I was well read um, and I would feel that as a, as a huge compliment 
Um, I wish my students would read more um, because I think they're missing out. But, you know, it's not for me to tell people how to, um, excuse me, <coughs> how, to, how to live their lives. And, um, you know, I may feel internally that people should be well read, but I'm not going to judge people who are not. Um, number eight, what is your book buying process? I don't know if I have a particular process. Um, I like to uh, buy books these days, probably once, uh, once a month. Um, I like to set a little bit aside for that. Um, I will place an order. Most of my book buying these days is done online mm. uh, because, you know, I live in a non-English speaking country and I live in a small, very small town that doesn't have a bookshop. Um, so I order from online retailers either based in the bigger cities here in the Czech Republic or from, uh, unfortunately, but needs must, from Amazon um, in Germany because... Um, can't really buy from the UK anymore without being subject to, to taxes and customs and that kind of thing. Uh, book depository uh, is also very good for my needs. Uh, if I could go to an independent book retailer very easily or a second-hand bookshop, I would be ecstatic about, over that. But for, unfortunately, it's not very practical for me because one, I, you know, I do speak some check and I understand quite a bit but I can't really read in it and it would certainly be a bit of a chore for me to have to you know plow through a book in the Czech language so you know and the selection of English books in the bookshops tend to be not bad but quite small so online once a month putting an order in once a month is is pretty much the the method or process I use to buy to buy books um, number 10, how do you use what you read? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, these days, I use what I read to show off. <laughs> no, um, I don't know. I like learning. I mean, I read a lot of nonfiction, and I like learning something I didn't know before, and I like dropping it into conversation, you know. Um, I wouldn't do that with everyone, but certainly when I'm speaking with family, um, you know, my parents both enjoy reading. So if I've learned something interesting, I will, I will bring it up and that's pretty much how I'll use it. I might mention it sometimes to my colleagues here at work, uh, occasionally even with the kids, if it's pertinent to our lesson or something we were talking about. But generally speaking, what I read is either discussed with like-minded people or just kept locked away up here for uh, a time where it might come in useful maybe on you know um, who wants to be a millionaire or something and you know some obscure thing that I read will end up being the answer to the million the million pound or million dollar question so there we go uh, 11 if you could download a book to your brain would you still read well I don't know. I'm too old-fashioned for that, I think. I mean, there came a time, perhaps, when, you know, I remember being a little kid, and I thought, well, if I slept with my textbook under my pillow the night before a test, it might seep into my brain through osmosis. Uh, of course, that was nonsense, but um, if I could upload things to my brain... I mean, I don't know. If it was like a, a dictionary to, to use and learn a language, it would be good. But there is a pleasure I get in the sitting down and, you know, making a nice hot drink and Elvis snuggling up beside me and reading that book. So I wouldn't want to lose that. So perhaps it would depend on the purpose, but uh, no, probably not. Uh, let's see. Number 12. What are your views on rereading a book? Well, this was something I didn't really do very much. There were just one or two books that I would reread uh, almost on a yearly basis. Anyone who watches this channel will know what they are. Uh, if you don't, then it would be like Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome and Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. And then other than that, I didn't really reread, but um, I've started to more since I've been on Booktube and joined different you know, book clubs and uh, read-alongs and that kind of thing. And uh, I'm enjoying it, actually. It was always something I thought I wouldn't enjoy because, um, you know, although I don't necessarily remember the book well, 
uh, if you just ask me to talk about it. But as soon as I start reading, I start to remember what's coming up and that kind of thing. And I felt it took away a bit of enjoyment. But as I'm getting older, I'm finding this easier and more, more enjoyable to actually reread certain books. Um, okay, number 13, what makes a good book? Well, I think that's very similar to, to you know, question one uh, or prompt one um, about, you know, good character plot or message. Again, it depends on the type of book that you're judging. I mean, uh, an excellent story or plot makes for a great thriller, um, you know. Um, for me, I suppose, because I read a lot of non-fiction, I would have to say good writing um, to me makes a good book if it doesn't really matter if the story in essence is not that exciting but the language employed to tell that story is then uh, it can make a huge difference to me and therefore can make a book on a mediocre topic uh, or not particularly exciting topic uh, be very good so yeah uh, what makes a book bad? Again, bad writing. <laughs> bad writing makes a book bad for me, as well as poor use or poor research, you know, for example. Uh, and that can apply to both fiction and non-fiction. I hate it when I'm reading something and they get the facts wrong, especially when it's something so easy to check. You know, Dan Brown was someone who did this, you know, the, the, the story, for example, The Da Vinci Code, I remember thinking, oh, it's not a bad story, but there were so many nonsensical bits in it, or stupid bits that could have been checked, like his, I think at one stage he uses a mobile phone at 30,000 feet or something over the Atlantic, and it just wouldn't work, yeah, or, um, you know, the the... These are nitpicking things, but yeah, I, I just hate it when someone puts information in a book and it's obviously nonsense, you know. Um, so yeah, that makes a book bad for me. Laziness when it comes to writing and not checking things, even little things that are just so... Oh, sorry, I'm going on and on. Forget that. I'll move on. I'll, I'll, I'll get angry. 15. How do you feel about not finishing a book? I can't do it. I feel too guilty. It will sit there, it will call to me, I will feel like a fraud if I haven't done it. Uh, I may put it off, I may put it off for even up to a year, but eventually I'll go back and finish it. I tend to have a rule that I have to get at least, you know, a chapter or two, depending on the length, say 20, 30 pages into a book, and then I will have to finish it. You know, if I've just read you know, the first, the introduction or the first few pages just to see what it's like, then that doesn't count. But, um, yeah, I don't have to do that. Uh, number 16, should the author's personal life matter at all? Generally speaking, no. Um, as I say, I, I've said before, I don't even know sometimes if the author is male, female, or anything in between. Um you know, that doesn't, that's not important to me. Uh, I mean, if their personal life is something extremely outrageous or illegal or abhorrent to our social norms, like, uh, you know, if an author turns out to be a child killer or something like that, then it would matter to me, you know, uh, it would. Um, if the author turned out to be some kind of fraud, um, then they lose credibility for me and that would matter. So like if they pretended to be, I don't know, an expert in something or other, and it turns out they faked their credentials, then obviously I would never do it. I mean, I had slight problems with the author, um, on Russian history, Orlando Figus, because he, years ago, uh, got involved with this, um, if I remember rightly, I hope I remember rightly, um, there was an issue over negative reviews on Amazon uh, that um, someone was putting out there and it turned out to be the author denigrating other authors in the same subject area, but he was using like uh, 
you know, assumed names and things like that. And, you know, they said he was going through a difficult time, whatever. But that that kind of detracted a little bit, uh, you know, from his credibility for me. Though I have since gone back and read his books. And I do think he's a good author. So I don't really know why he did it. But, you know. Um, but, yeah, generally speaking, no, I don't care. Don't care about your sex, or in, uh, sexual orientation, se your gender, your sexual orientation. Um, you know, those kind of things don't don't matter to me at all. 17, if you could read only one genre for the rest of time, what would it be? Well, if I could take, uh, you know, generally non-fiction, that's fine. I'm happy with that. If I have to narrow it down, then I would say history. Uh, wouldn't bother me at all to just read that for the end of time. Number 18, do you ever read a book without knowing anything about it? Yes, uh, though often that book would be a recommendation from somebody else. So if someone says, hey Mark, you've got to read this book, but I'm not going to tell you what, it about, what it's about because I don't want to spoil it, then I, you know, I'll take that on board and I'll read it and I'll take a chance. And uh, you know, I may be surprised, uh, although I may not be. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite up for trying something that I don't know anything about. Number 19, what author, genre, series, or culture can you just not get into? I struggle with fantasy. I struggle with fantasy. I struggle with sci-fi. Although I did recently read uh, Isaac Asimov's Foundation Book 1, and I thought it was quite good. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, I've never really got hugely into fantasy or sci-fi. I'd like to. Uh, but I think there's so much good non-fiction out there. You know, especially when it comes to history, like if you read books on the, the, the fall of Constantinople or the Crusades, I mean, that's uh, the Wars of the Roses, for example. That's far more exciting than, to me at least, than, than maybe something like um, the Lord of the Rings, which is, which is great, but it's imaginary, whereas this stuff is real and it's often you know, more incredible. Um, so, yeah. Number 20, do you think everyone should read and why? Yes, I do think everyone should read. I think, as I said in an earlier, uh, for a, earlier response to one of the tags earlier, uh, I can't speak, prompts earlier, I think it makes for a more rounded uh, life experience if you, if you read. And I think reading makes you a better person. Um, you know... Uh, that's just my opinion. I mean, I remember reading this thing. I think it was, it might have been some meme or something, and it, it showed this book, uh, these outdoor bookshops in, in Baghdad, I think. And apparently there's an old Arabic saying where, you know, because they were wondering how they could leave these books outside and people didn't steal them. And somebody said, well, uh, people who read don't steal, and people who steal don't read. Uh, obviously, that's extremely general, but I like to I like I like that, and I like to think that that's true. That um, well-read people who, you know, um, obviously don't get influenced by negative and, and nasty things, seem to genuinely be decent people. So I think it helps. Um, it helps you to be better person maybe if you read I mean just look at this community we have here on, on, on booktube there's such wonderful people um, fantastic friends that I've made since I've been doing this since March and what's brought us together what you know what, what what's the common denominator is the fact that everybody's a reader and I think um, that makes us more uh, understanding and tolerant uh, to all the differences uh, that we may have in other aspects of our life, but you know we're brought together and united in our love of books and love of reading. So there we go. Anyway, that's the wonderful um, philosophy of um, philosophy of reading tag. Uh, thank you, Brandon from Brandon's Bookshelf for creating it. Thank you, Christina, for tagging me. I will tag um, a couple of people. I will tag uh, Aaron Facer hasn't done it uh, I will tag Vin at Revenant Reads uh, Summer at Cozy Reading of Quaker Cats and yeah that's that for now uh, obviously if you would like to do it and uh, you haven't been tagged then consider yourself tagged from me so have a wonderful uh, rest of the day 
uh, and uh, look forward to seeing you all again soon. Take care, everyone. All the best. Bye bye.